everybody. Welcome to Artist Talk. Today we are launching into space with our new exhibition, First Fleet. We are joined by world-renowned photographer John Chakras, who captured the early years of the space shuttle program, and our wonderful curator, Juliana Ferraro, who put together this exhibition. Juliana, talk to me a little bit about what made you look into space for the series of exhibitions that you are bringing to Pompano. Yeah, well, it all started with um, me following what's happening with the Mars exploration that is going to happen. They're going to launch a rocket to do um, investigation, to do research in Mars sometime between July and August, depending on the weather. And I just started looking for exhibitions to celebrate that space exploration and what it meant to, to, go, to go in space and also the space between us, uh, as, mm -hmm. as another exhibition says. So I was working on a series of exhibitions at the Alec Cultural Arts, the Pompano Beach Cultural Center and Bailey Contemporary Arts to, in all these spaces, talk about space. And I knew that John had worked on a portfolio when he was doing the shuttle program in the early beginnings. And I think, I believe I saw that exhibition somewhere in a, in a, in a museum in Daytona, I believe the Southeast Museum. And I believe I reached out to him or he reached out to me. I mean, the images of that installation were so powerful. And th the images in itself are, they explore the sense of wonder. So more than being documentary, they really have the sense of wonder. And I knew that I had to have it, have to invite him to be part of the Pompano Beach exhibition. And uh, so, I mean, here, here we are, he accepted. And I think the images are ready to go. Um, so I think uh, I'm, I want to know, John, if you can share with us, like what was the spark that have you start that documentation and approach NASA and start the project? How did it start it? Well, actually, the spark started when I was um, was very young. I mean, it literally started with uh, with um, the first American going into space and Alan Shepard. I think it was in third grade, and I just became um, fascinated with the whole idea of of humans traveling in space. I mean, it was real. It wasn't Buck Rogers or any of that stuff anymore. It was real. Um, and, um, I think years later, I realized that I was also, um, attracted to the fact that it's something that had never been done before. And, um, so as a kid, I became fascinated with it and I followed it every launch in the Mercury days. And, uh, then they moved on to project, um, Gemini and, uh, I would, convinced my mother to let me stay home from school so I could watch the coverage on TV. Um, and it's funny because it's what got me into photography. Um, my dad had a Roloflex camera and so I took the camera and I started to set it up in front of the, the, uh, the TV set and I started photographing the, um, the, the launches on TV and I would get the film processed and, uh, and, you know, take it to the drugstore and I'd have these prints of, of the, the TV. So that got me into photography and, uh, I kind of vicariously lived through life magazine, uh, because, um, they covered the space program. So any issue of life magazine that came out that had pictures of the, anything to do with space, I would just, you know, look at them constantly. So that's that, that's the link to my, my love of photography. And, um, that got me in to processing film and, uh, you know, just developing a passion around photography. So they were this kind of parallel, um, uh, parallel uh, tracks in my life. Uh, you know, I was fascinated with space and technology. I was fascinated with, um, you know, photography because it was a, a precise medium. It, it was very scientific because it had chemistry and all kinds of stuff about it. Um, and so photography became a, um, um, a passion of mine. 
and pursued it as a as a hobby in school and built a dark room in my house and and uh, kept tabs on the the space program. Uh, you know, I remember very well the the night that man landed on the moon. I was in high school and um, left when I graduated from high school. I pursued a degree in art and photography, and so um, that's what my my degree is. Uh, I have a BFA in photography from Ohio University. Uh, while I was there, I ended up working with Ansel Adams and going out to California and and spending time in Yosemite and had the opportunity to be an assistant at, at some of his workshops. And so um, I, um, when I graduated from college, the moon program, Apollo program had ended, but it was, the new program was, um, the space shuttle was on the horizon. And uh, so being fresh out of college and in this, um, you know, more of a, of a creative mindset of doing kind of high-end kind of representational kind of imaging. Um, when the, when the space, when the st shuttle started to fly, or they're getting ready to fly, I said, this light kind of went off. And I said, you know, maybe this would be a great photographic project. So it's like everything kind of uh, came full circle, you know, my fascination with, with cameras and Life Magazine and uh, uh, working with Ansel Adams and, and learning about majestic, you know, very elevated photographs of national parks and, and got thinking that, you know, the, the space program has always been like a national treasure. So maybe I could do a, a kind of a, a high-end documentary project. It wasn't a journalist. I didn't go down there as a journalist. I went there as an artist that wanted to do these elevated, uh, symbolic, monumental kind of photographs of this, this technology. Okay, Joe. So this is, this is fascinating. It's a fascinating story. So can you share with us how do you exactly put your foot into NASA? Well, um, I really didn't know how to go about it. And so I did a little research and um, they had the only way to get in was through the media. And uh, I thought to myself, well, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm not a journalist. Uh, and um, so I kind of put the, put the thought of it aside. And then I kind of mentioned it to my wife and uh, I said, I don't think they'll ever give me a, a credentials. And she says, well, you're not going to know unless you try. And so I literally, I sent a letter, sent it down to the press office. And then a few weeks later, I got this letter back and they had given me a press credential for the, for the sh shuttle. And so that's how I got my foot in the door. And I think if it wasn't for my wife, it may, maybe never would have happened. So. so, John, let me ask you, because I mean, obviously we're going back to the early 1980s and what you wanted to do was to capture the launches, not necessarily as a journalist, but as an artist, but the, there are a lot of challenges, a lot of technical challenges. How did you overcome those? Well, I was so ill-equipped to start off with. I mean, I went down there as a large format view camera photographer uh, I figured, well, I'll go down for one or two launches and I'll, uh, I'll get the, the picture. So the first couple of launches, I, I really didn't get anything. I was, I didn't have the right camera equipment, but I, um, you know, saw that, um, people were setting remote cameras out. And so I started questioning everybody about the equipment and how they, how they were getting their, uh, pictures. And uh, eventually, at about the third launch, I had amassed um, equipment that um, that I could actually begin to capture um, some of what my at least my vision was. And uh, as with anything, it's a slow process that that you build up. So. 
I saw in, in the exhibition though, it looked like you literally had to craft certain, were they like shelters for the camera or what are those that we're seeing right now? Well, what I learned was um, that NASA would allow you to set up what, what we call remote cameras. And a remote camera is a camera that is self-contained and has to work on its own. Obviously, we could set it within a thousand feet or so of the, the shuttle, but obviously you can't be standing there to, to take. So it required uh, uh, some way to protect the cameras. Uh, so I designed camera housings uh, to put the cameras in to protect them from the elements and also required some kind of type of device to um, to trigger the camera at the moment of liftoff. Uh, so some of the solutions were to use light from uh, that a light sensor that would start the cam motor driven cameras running at the ignition. The other one was sound uh, because it made so much noise. You could use a microphone that would would then uh, start the cameras running and the microphone would be run into uh, uh, a triggering device, a, a, a d electronic device, and that would trip, trip the cameras. And you would decide if the launch was, your camera was a couple miles away, let's say, the light uh, was what you would use because it would start the camera instantly. If you waited for the sound to travel two miles to reach the 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 remote microphone to start the camera the there was a good chance the shuttle would be out of the frame so there was all kind of technical challenges that we had to overcome your art is very tight with technology so i have two questions kind of in one um can you give us a little teaser about what the talk may cover hopefully we can offer it again and also, do you have any plans in technology that you're doing or you're working lately? Uh, well, I think, as I said before, that this I, I was attracted to the space program because of technology and something that had never been done before. It got me into photography, and I was fascinated by photography because of its precision and its, and its craft and chemistry and all different kinds of things. Uh, so, um, I think as a result of the space program, I'm always fascinated with, with, um, with technology. And, uh, so I was an early adopter of digital technology. I grew up, you know, in, uh, the, um, you know, it was in college in the seventies. That was also the time that personal computers were were being developed. Apple started in late uh, 70s with their first personal computer. Well, I bought an Apple computer in 1980. It was like, wow, this is like cutting edge technology, something that hadn't been done before. And uh, bought the original Macintosh in 1984, uh, which literally changed my life in terms of uh, technology that enhance my life. Uh, I, I literally used that original Macintosh computer to design the equipment that I photographed the space shuttle with. I designed the circuit boards for the remote cameras, the housings and everything I, I did with the original uh, Macintosh computer that I bought in 1984. So. Yeah, so from all the photos that are in the exhibition, are there a few, are there two or three that resonate with you, that they have like a stronger meaning? They're kind of your favorite. Can you share with us uh, which ones they are and why they are so important to you? Uh, yeah, the, um, the, the one I, I, I chose for the cover of the book, the book which is First Fleet NASA Space Shuttle Program from 1981 to 1986. It's a silhouette of the um, uh, space shuttle uh, Challenger. So there's, um, when I took the picture, it was uh, very iconic uh, and kind of elevated. It was, uh, they're, they do what they, they call, uh, they roll the shuttle out to the launch pad. It comes out of the, so I was there in the early morning and the sun was rising and the sun was, was, um, I was shooting into the sun. So I got this silhouette of the of the space shuttle 
And it's just its iconic shape, the solid rocket boosters and the tank and the wings. And so it looked, it, it looked very, um, I don't know, monumental, um, uh, elevated. Um, and um, the irony, or I, I don't want to say irony, but it's, it takes on more uh, meaning today because Challenger was the first space shuttle that we lost in the first uh, ever uh, in-flight accident, the first time we lost any astronauts uh, during a mission. So, so that picture that, that is on the front of the book is one of the most uh, significant. And then there is um, a shot of, um, I can't remember which mission, I think it's 41D, it's a launch shot. Um, and um, it was shot early in the morning. It was a remote shot. Uh, and everything just had to work perfectly to have that, that shot um, be successful. There's one that I particularly like, and that's the, I think I saw it in Houston the first time I saw your work. There is the, I think it's like the tail, so it's very abstract and is like the tail of one of the shuttles and it's so telling and so it's so it was really different from the other images that you see about when, when people talk about or show images of the space of, of the shuttles so that to me was i gravitated immediately to your work and forward well i i think th there's some detailed shots of the of the shuttle i think that's what you're referring to and one is the 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 um the vertical stabilizer in the back and when i was photographing it i was thinking more about sculpture uh and one thing that 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 fascinated me about the space shuttle is the form of the shuttle took place as a result of its function you know which was almost kind of the reverse of what what art is but to me it became art uh because the that that shape was the result of of you know computations and and efficiency and that's the the most efficient design and then on top of that there were these um uh tiles uh, thermal tiles that they put all over the body of the shuttle and the thermal tiles are almost like a jigsaw puzzle that fit in in very precise ways. And each tile had a, had a number on it. So, you know, an engineer knew exactly which tile was in what location. And to me, it became almost like an Arakawa or something like that, where, it, where there's writing all over this. So those particular images struck me as, as being very sculptural. Um, and I think probably my background in, in art and um, you know, studying a lot of different things. I, I was bringing that kind of, kind of sensibility and, and it may be why, um, you know, it, it wouldn't have been a journalistic shot. It wouldn't be something that one of the journalists would have shot. Uh, I don't shoot a lot of the astronauts. I, I was really about, the pictures were a lot about the technology and the fact it was the most complex machine ever, ever assembled. And I think to this day, it still is. Um, so, so there was a lot of, a lot of that um, that I, I think I brought to the pictures. John, I had a question. I mean, we, you talk about the difference between shooting art versus journalism. I'm wondering how much planning went into getting the shot or how much of it was the artist in the moment seeing it and capturing it? Well, um, the biggest difference that I discovered um, trying to photograph the space shuttle is I had very little control over the, the circumstances. You know, prior to going down there, I mean, I could go out in the woods, I could wait for the light, uh, you know, and do all different, I had a lot of control, but man, you get into the space center and you're escorted around and you're standing shoulder to shoulder with 300 other photographers taking a picture of the same thing. And uh, how are you going to make a picture look different from everybody else's? And I think that's where my 
my um, background in the arts and in photography and studying light and waiting for the light or understanding how light defines uh, objects. So um, I, would, I would wait for particular moments to shoot or in the event of that launch shot that I was uh, referring to earlier when everything has to work um, and, it, and it, it takes a shot that is, that, uh, is in a lot of ways pretty pedestrian, but it takes it to that next step up. And in that particular um, case and, and a number of others, I would look at sun angles. I would find out where the sun was going to be at a, at a particular time of the day when the launch was. So I would make my decision about where I was going to put my camera based on where the sun was going to be, you know, uh, and I think that's what made it different than where a journalist, they just need to get that picture of the, of the shuttle taking off or landing or something that they can, they could get out at the time. It was called the wires as soon as possible. Me, I wanted the, I knew the light was going to be at a certain angle and it would illuminate certain things in the picture uh a certain way so that's how i would set my camera so i would study uh where the sun was going to be at the time of launch and um the one i think it's 41d i believe that was the launch uh i knew it was going to be about 7 15 in the morning so i was going to get this nice uh low angled side lighting warm uh because it's early morning light and um and I also knew that when the rocket ignited, that we had the first thing you saw were these big steam clouds because they would flush the pad with, with a lot of water. Well, I knew that steam clouds were going to act like diffusers and reflect the light back onto the shuttle. So I took that into account. And then with that particular picture, uh, we had the early morning light, the, the diffuse light off of the, from the solid rock abusers reflecting off the steam. Then a storm front was moving in. So we had this gray background that was like the perfect, the perfect background for those colors to be very rich. And, and so uh, that is kind of what I consider my iconic launch shot. Um, so those are probably the two most iconic. Uh, the other one is one of the landing shots um, to, to photograph the landing. I couldn't use remote cameras, so we had to stretch three miles of wire. It was like the world's longest cable release. Uh, so we had to develop special equipment for that. And I have one picture where the shuttle, it's about three feet off the ground. It's before the, before the wheels touch the ground. And to me, it's, it's that energy against the runway and the wheels before they touch is what made that picture strong. Because if it was a, a fraction of a second later, it would have been the puff of smoke from the, when the wheels are touching the concrete. So it's like just the shuttle's almost ready to touch down and so, so it, it required a lot of um, a lot of problem solving. Uh, all right, I did. I I want to close with this because um, when I when I put the book together, it was um, twenty five years that I had not even looked at these pictures. Um, the uh, from nineteen eighty one to nineteen eighty six was the the um, um, you know, the years of the early days of the shuttle, we had the Challenger accident in 1986, and that, for a number of reasons, was the end of my project. I couldn't dedicate the time to it. I was incredibly depressed over witnessing the accident. Life goes on. So uh, I had uh, decided that everything goes, I just put it away. I literally, luckily, I kept track of these things. Uh, so uh, when I, when the qu shuttle quit flying in 2011, I got the negatives back out, started scanning them. Uh, but it also made me look back on my life 
And uh, in making the book, I, re I discovered the threads of when I was a, a kid, fascinated with the space program, uh, getting me into photography and all those kind of things. And uh, something I'd mentioned early on, what fascinated me about the space shuttle or space program when I was a kid was it was something that had never been done before. Uh, when I got older and got into the arts, to me, good art was something that had never been done before. So I was always driven to figure out a way that I could make art that hadn't been done before. Uh, so I use things like technology to give me an edge or to kind of push my art into, a, into another realm. So I think that uh, is probably the biggest uh, takeaway for me uh, that, you know, things had kind of come full circle, but the seed for, for even the art that I make today was the technology uh, that fascinated me about the space program and the fact that we were doing things that had never been done before. And I, I keep that in my, my head when I'm making, making my art. So, well, um, that's John, it, it's, it's truly been an, an honor to have you on Artist Talk today. And I know Juliana and I are hopeful that, you know, First Fleet will be able to open shortly and that we'll be able to have you into the venue so yeah. you can really have your artist talk and, and talk to everybody live because it, it's, it's been captivating. And I think it, it's a period in our history that a lot of people are unaware of or, you know, it's a distant memory that might have been a bit colored by Challenger, but it was truly a time of majesty and magic. And, and you captured it all so brilliantly. And I just, you know, thank you for sharing this with us today. We, we just really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me and thank you for the opportunity to uh, share the work with everybody in, uh, in uh, Florida. I'm look looking forward to it. Uh, it's all ready to go. It's all <laughs> crated up and <laughs> sitting ready just to, uh, to, to send it down and put it on your walls whenever that may be. So. Juliana, hopefully we will be ready to launch soon. <laughs> thank, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you on the next Artist Talk.